Hi everyone, welcome back to Journey to CCIE, where we torture Ronnie Wong <laughs> as he gets ready for the CCIE lab exam experience. In this episode, we are going to discuss what's in his lab. Is there physical equipment? Is there virtualized equipment? What is in the lab for Ronnie to be working with as far as hardware and software goes. My name's Anthony Sequera, and again, thanks for joining us in this episode of Journey to CCIE. All right, now you mentioned the idea of equipment here. How important is it that I know what piece of equipment are there and why does that help me? Boy, I think it's pretty critical. Okay. So Ronnie, one of the things that students always say with the CCIE is they see the fine print on the exam objectives, the blueprint, and the fine print says, sure, we're gonna try and stick to these 900 bullet points worth of content, but we have the right to ask you anything at all we want. So students will see that and they start saying, oh my gosh, this is unpassable. This lab would not be able to be passed. They can ask anything at all. Well, hold on now. They have to stay with the features that your devices support. It's not magic, right? If, if your router doesn't support bi-directional forwarding detection, they can't have you set it up. Your router doesn't support it. Makes so <laughs> I think it's really important to know the specifics on what's going to be in your exam as far as hardware and software goes. Let's answer it right now. Ronnie in the CCIE Enterprise will be dealing with the following virtual machines. He'll have the CSR1000V. Okay. And that's also equipped with the iOS XE SD-WAN release of 1612 code. So notice, very specific on his SD-WAN code and the style of router that he will be working with. That router, by the way, I think is inside of CML. It is. So that is yeah, right what version. a great way to right. get initially familiar with the XE, the iOS XE operating system and that device. You could also spin one, one up in AWS and use an eval copy. The next thing, Ronnie, is the iOS V running 15.8. I do believe that's the exact CML code that's it running. Is. Awesome. So you've got a head start there. Next up, we have the iOS V2 L2. That's at 15.2, probably same as CML. Right. Then the actual like graphical user interfaces and things of that nature for the SD-WAN, that's at 18.4. Notice how important it is for Ronnie to know that version because the SD-WAN is constantly expanding how it operates and what features it can do. So he has a nice cutoff point on his studies. He's like, don't talk to me about version 19 or version 20 of the SD-WAN solution. I need to be expert level with 18.4. And then finally, DNA Center and again, very important that Ronnie is aware that it's 1.3.1 code. So if there's new GWiz 2.x DNA Center out there, he's not going to worry about those new features. One exception to that would be the design section. But again, I think that Cisco is going to use some common sense here, Ronnie, and they're not going to be testing you on features outside of that code. Now, with the features that we're talking about here, where can I learn more about those particular releases that you're talking about? Yeah, so we are going to be leveraging the documentation okay. big time. And we're going to have an episode here on YouTube for you where we focus on the documentation. And that's going to be an important episode. By the way, Ronnie, we're not done. There's more things in your lab. Any physical devices? Well, there is. The CAT 9300 series is in there physically running 16.12. There's the CAT 9K inside of CML, but it's a real generic version of the 9K code. Clearly, there was things at layer two, I would be willing to bet that Cisco doesn't know how they're going to virtualize in CML yet. So there is 
a CAT 9300 physically that's accessible to Ronnie in the lab exam. There's also a category of software they call virtual machine support. And I guess all they're saying here is there's some additional VMs that might surprise you. There's ICE 2.6. Again, the version there is very important as far as what features it supports. And then the two surprises might be Windows 10 Pro and Ubuntu Desktop 18.04 LTS. Why are those there? Well, aren't they great clients that, you know, can be utilized in order to demonstrate activities that would involve an actual desktop client? So those will be there as well. If Ronnie has never logged into a Linux box before, which of course is not true, yeah. but if he, if he had no f familiarity with Linux whatsoever, wow, he better because they're making it clear that he's going to be interacting with an Ubuntu desktop at some point. So it's really important to know the exact ingredients that are inside our lab. And there's something in there as well that we need to talk about, and that is the documentation, all of it. So they are going to give, I said all of it, not technically true. Here's how it works. They're going to give Ronnie access to this page, the all products support page. And each link from this page is going to operate. If Ronnie tries to go anywhere outside this collection of links and their sublinks, he will get a 404 not found. But this page right here and all of the links that he can access from this page will be available to him. And as you might guess, we're going to have some episodes, Ronnie, Sounds on good. how you're going to leverage that. Right. We'll have to do actually a couple of episodes together on this because the documentation at your fingertips can be a great thing or it can be a terrible thing. Mm. And I'll explain more in our upcoming episodes on that. Where are we going next in the CCIE journey? Well, now that we know what is going to be in Ronnie's lab exam experience, we need to talk about next time the lab exam format. We know there's going to be an initial three-hour section and then in a five-hour section to wrap up the eight-hour extravaganza. What is the details of those sections and how is it graded? That's on tap for you next in our CCIE journey. Thanks so much for joining Ronnie and I in this episode. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube, our YouTube channel, and you might want to turn on notifications so that when we release a new episode, you don't miss it. Thanks again, everyone. Until next time, Ronnie Wong, Anthony Sequera, signing off, IT Pro TV.